Hey guys, okay, let me, I'm gonna pull over the other, st well, statement from the Northport Police Department before we go over Stephen Berlino's. So let me just get on the right page. I'll pull that over so that you're not seeing a blank screen here. Pull that over. Up here. They made a mistake when trying to track down Brian Laundry. In the early days of the Gabby Petito investigation, the police say officers mistook Brian for his mother. Eight on your side confirmed officers believe they saw Brian return to his parents' home in his Mustang, but it was actually his mom. A Northport police spokesperson says the two have a similar build and Laundrie's mother was wearing a baseball cap at the time. We do have a full timeline and section dedicated to the search for Brian Laundrie on our website, WFLA.com. Hyundai Elantra be versus quiet, Toyota. Be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Okay, so that was um, that. Now, there's a statement here. Hang on, let me just... I just want to grab my thumbnail so you're not left with... Welcome to everybody joining. Uh, I'm going to put there's an interesting statement from Stephen Bertolino, which we'll read here in just a sec. Let's get away. Get away. Sorry, my mouse is making so much noise. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay. Now, let me pull up. Okay, welcome everybody again. I don't really need to get into the right chat. Okay, so here's what the Northport Police. Now, we saw the interview on Wink yesterday when the PIO of the Northport Police Department, public information officer, is saying that they made the mistake. Who would do that? You know, who would drive their son's car home? And it was just kind of crazy. So now they come out and they've said that there's a very good possibility Brian was already deceased. And so, you know, further see why. It starts oh, with gosh. Splenda Naturals. Quiet. The natural. Quiet. There's a further um, CYA action covering your arse in saying, well, you know, would it really matter, right? So police in Northport do not believe the misidentification between Brian Laundrie and his mother the week he went missing had a major overall impact on the investigation. Northport Public Information Officer Josh Taylor admitted Monday that officers watching the laundry home believed they saw Brian Laundry in the family's gray Mustang on September 15th. They later realized it was actually Brian's mother, Roberta. Taylor told WFLA's Allison Henning on Tuesday that the misidentification didn't have a big impact on costs and the investigation. Other than confusion, it likely changed nothing. There's a very good possibility that Brian was already deceased, he said. He still needed to be found. Now, attorney Stephen Bertolino, who's representing the Laundry family, responded to Josh Taylor's statement in a text message to WFLA that says, None of this may have made a difference with respect to Brian's life, but it certainly would have prevented all of the false accusations leveled by so many against Chris and Roberta with respect to hiding Brian or otherwise finding an escape. Now, Josh Taylor noted that the department admitted to the mix-up because police wanted the public to better understand why they thought Brian Laundrie was home that week. Northport Police Chief Todd Garrison made a statement during a September 16th news conference that officers knew exactly where laundry was. The mix-up was a direct result of lack of cooperation from the family early on in this investigation, Josh Taylor said. The Northport um, PIO Josh Taylor said, 
previously that the Laundrie family would not speak to police who visited their home on September 11th, the night Gabby Petito was reported missing. He said they only handed over their information for their attorney that night. Now, Stephen Bertolino says, you can't blame the family because the police didn't know enough to follow someone they were obviously surveilling. So the confusion between Roberta Laundrie and Brian Laundrie happened on September 15th, two days before the missing persons report for Brian Laundrie was filed, but several days after he actually went missing. September 15th is also the day that Brian Laundrie was named a person of interest in the disappearance of Gabby Petito. When Brian Laundrie was first publicly declared missing, police said his parents had last seen him go hiking in Northport's Myakahatchee Creek Environmental Park on September 14th. But then Stephen Bertolino provided an updated timeline at the beginning of October and said the family believed their son actually left one day earlier on September 13th. Okay, so Bertolino told uh, Eights on Your Side, Masha Saidi, last week that he notified the FBI the night that Brian Laundrie failed to return home. He also said that the parents went to the park on September 15th and brought that Mustang home so it wouldn't get towed. After more than a month of searching in the Mayakachi Creek Environmental Park and connected Carlton Reserve, authorities found remains of what was identified as Brian Laundrie last week. And the FBI confirmed that those are his remains. Bertolino said, this is a tragedy for two families and any mistakes made by anyone or any entity involved should be acknowledged and used to train or educate others so the mistakes are not repeated. Okay, now, yesterday we learned that the Laundrie family was not in their home. They were grieving privately in Florida with their daughter, Cassie. But the parents returned home today, and I'll show you that. Hang on. Southern Style Mac and Cheese. One regular size package, Eckridge Smoked Sausage. So I was wrong here. They are returning to the house. It's interesting. Thought that they wouldn't return, especially not this soon. Those are the new trespassing signs he put up shortly before they left. Yeah, I'm just going to come around and give a statement. Does she have a, is that the same pink cap or is that a new white one?
I don't know why they would not um, clean out their garage and pull their be able to move that camper somewhere so they could pull their car in and they wouldn't go through this. I, I, if I was going through this every day, I would. That would be the biggest motivator if I couldn't pull my car in my garage to clean out my garage so I could pull my car in. I, I mean, at the very. I mean. They have a shed in the back, um, you know, order another shed or something so you can pull that stuff out and pull your car in. I, I don't know why anybody would, especially um, with this camper, you've got to park further out in the driveway. Like, why, 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 why? I don't know. All right, let's see what... Um... Corolla. Look what Elantra has and what Corolla doesn't. Okay. Now, I'm just going to grab to the... To the chat because I am not in the right chat so I can't see anybody and I can't see what you're saying at all so let me just go into there <clears throat> okay there we are all right hi everybody how are you so I'm just gonna take a look here what you're saying Carolyn, is it really bad out? Connecticut just has rain. Well, they actually told um, the school, uh, the high schoolers and stuff who had cars to please leave them at the high school because the roads are very bad. In some areas where our school district goes, they are very prone to flooding and a lot of flash flooding. Luckily up at the lake, we don't dumb um, because we're up you know, high on the top of the mountain and then we're up high, knock on wood. We don't get that. The other house sometimes has had water come down, but uh, very, very bad flooding in the in the towns in the valley, like where um, my son's restaurant is, and in the town where my sister lives. There, gosh, there was so much in uh, 2006. People were killed. A little uh, girl was taken right off of her porch and and killed. And people had to be taken away from boats in boats in the towns. That was like the worst that I ever saw up here. So I hope it doesn't get to that. It's raining very much. And I know there is a state of emergency. We lost power a couple of times last night, but it came right back. Hi everybody, Pinkberry, Raina, Mel Mack, Carol Boyce, Sour Milk and Cookies, True Crime Curator, Chelsea, Robin Lane, and Cheever. I'm just going through here, Robert Kim. Um, look, it's Brian, Diana. Let's see here. Maui, hey Maui, is that Maui? Maui Chickadee? Do you have a new name? Or is that someone else? D Irish, hi D Irish. Kathy Baleo, KT, Pamela, Janae, KT, I got you already. Emma B, uh, California Thunder, Mike. So let's see, it's not converted as we got to get a glimpse during one of the searches. No, it's no, it's it's not converted. It's a garage still. Hi, honey. So I, I mean, wouldn't you not all? Yeah, but it's 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 not because we saw it. It's not converted. They just have a lot of stuff in it. But really, come on, get another shed. Order one from Amazon. You know, one of those. Once you can put up and just put your stuff in there so you can pull it in. People in, people do their own thing. Why haven't they reached out to Gabby's family? Hi, Tina Gillespie. Tina Gillespie, oh my gosh. It's been a long time since I've seen you in the chat. How are you doing? And give her stuff back. Yeah, I don't, yeah, that's a shame, Tina, right? Um... I don't know. They should be able to get that just with a, the police should be able to go there and pick it up. I don't see how they're not, how they would be able to hold that. They call garages Florida basements. The way the media has been and all the protesters, I would have had my garage cleaned out for sure. Yeah, clean the garage. Who does that? Right. Um, okay, so let me go on to something else now because I want to just put WFLA because they're, they're um, hang on, WFLA is saying something about, you know, that 
I guess they're still having protesters out there. Who out there has been injured in an accident? I just okay here. Let me see what this is. I had just he must have just went off because he was just saying something when I came on here about the protesters. Hang on. And Brian uh, Anton. Let me see if he landed yet. He was in the air getting ready to land. He's going out to Wyoming and Utah, and he's going to do some stuff out there. So let me see where he is. Did he land? Landing soon, Brian says. Thanks for all your tips, info, phone numbers. Really helpful. I've been through most of your DMs. So he's going out there and he says, uh, the report last night, Northport police admit to making mistakes, mistaking Roberta Laundry for Brian Laundry, and more on our trip. Let's time this has happened since this all unfolded where they've just left the house for a long period of time. It was yesterday morning uh, that they left. Roberta had a backpack. We saw Chris put some boxes into his truck. Uh, early yesterday morning they were gone and they still haven't been back to the house we don't know where they are, but according to the Laundry family attorney, Stephen Bertolino, uh, he says that they are someplace in Florida, away from the house, this grieving their This is last night. They've right returned now. home just now. Brian, the autopsy for Brian Laundry was inconclusive, as you know. Now what happens? So inconclusive as of now, because it was just skeletal remains, uh, the medical examiner was not able to come up with a cause of death, which is why now uh, the bones have been sent to an anthropologist, someone who specializes in this, who can study the bones, who hopefully will be able to come up with something. Uh, police told me that they feel that there likely will eventually be a cause of death announced, but at this point, we're not sure. Brian, Northport police have come out. I know you've been in touch with them uh, over the last few days to clarify some details of the timeline of events that not only led uh, to Gabby's disappearance, but also Brian's disappearance. What have they shared and did that help us better understand what has happened? So this was probably the most interesting development of the day, Marty. You remember the first week that all of this began when we were in Northport, the police chief uh, and the police public information officer every day were saying that they knew where Brian Laundrie was, that they had eyes on him, but that they wouldn't tell us. Well today, well, today, for the first time, Josh Taylor, the public information officer, clarified why he says they believed they had eyes on Brian when they actually didn't. He says uh, the Wednesday of that week, uh, Roberta Laundry came home in the Mustang. She had a ball cap on, uh, and Taylor says that the police doing surveillance on the house actually thought that Roberta was Brian. Reported back to the higher ups that Brian got out of the Mustang and went into the house. Turns out it was actually Roberta. Uh, and Josh Taylor says that is the reason the chief said that they had eyes on Brian Laundry when we later learned uh, they didn't know where Brian Laundry was at all. Right. So they may have never been able to determine exactly where he was. Uh, Brian, the other thing I understand, uh, although the search at the reserve is now over, it's back open to the public, uh, the public is out there and they found some things today, at least one person did. Yeah, so there's been a lot of people who have gone out there and are sort of looking for things on their own. There was this one TikToker uh, who was out there uh, looking and dis actually yesterday and discovered a water bottle that seems to match up with the water bottle uh, that Gabby had. You've seen pictures of it in her YouTube videos and uh, Instagram images. It's the same water bottle. Uh, we know that that TikToker took the water bottle to police, filled out a uh, police report at the police station. Police now say it is part of the investigation. 
Whether or not it is the actual water bottle that belonged to Gabby's, at this point, we still don't know. Interesting. And Brian, so many people want answers. They want justice for Gabby. They want to know what has happened. And I think in order to do that, we sort of have to walk back through everything we know, the timeline of events, the places that we know they visited. And you're going to be doing that over the next coming days. Yeah, Marnie, we're going to be traveling. We're obviously still in Florida now. We're going to be traveling to Utah, to Moab, where so much of this unfolded, where you saw that body camera video. We'll be headed there tomorrow, and then we're going to work our way up uh, to Grand Teton, trying to retrace some of these steps, see if we can learn any new information. I've obviously been getting so many tips on social media that we haven't really been able to look into because so much of the stuff is up there, and we've been in Florida. Uh, so we're going to spend the next several days there, uh, and we'll put it all together. We're hoping to have a big special for you uh, on Thursday night. I'll be there for that, Brian, as you know, and hopefully we can uncover something that we, we didn't see previously that will help uh, provide some answers in this case. Brian Enton live for us in Florida. Brian, good to see you. Thank you. Okay, and then the other, uh, I was going to show you one other thing. There's one, he's landing soon, okay. So we'll, of course, keep up with that, but there is, um, hold on, I don't know if this is, come here. Hold on, my mouse is not being good. Okay. Let me get rid of this. And I'm just trying to see if this is the same. It says 22 minutes ago, but I don't know if this is the same thing they're replaying from yesterday, but let's see if it is. Admitting they made a mistake when trying to track down Brian Laundrie. In the early days of the Gabby Petito investigation, the, the police say officers mistook Brian for his mother. Eight on your side confirmed officers believe they saw Brian return to his parents' home in his Mustang, but it was actually his mom. A Northport police spokesperson says the two have a similar build, and Laundrie's mother was wearing a baseball cap at the time. Oh, we do have a full timeline and section dedicated All to the right, search for the Brian Laundrie on our website, WFLA.com. Okay. Quiet. But I was looking for, um, let's see, a notebook that could reveal clues about Gabby Petito's death could potentially be salvageable, authorities said on Monday. The FBI has been working to preserve the water damage book which was recovered not far from where Brian Laundrie's remains were found last week. Josh Taylor said the book was wet, but possibly salvageable. The FBI said that the notebook and other items had been found in part of the park that was previously submerged in water. If the contents are still legible, crime experts say Laundrie's notebook could offer clues that may help solve the killing of his fiance Gabby Petito. And uh, former FBI Deputy Director Andrew McCabe said the notebook was likely sent to the head FBI laboratory in Quantico, Virginia. We have experts who Can really you do spend it one more time. What? what? Do it again. What is going on here? Can't you just do it yourself? What is? This? I like when you do it. The freak is going on. That's the advertisement on one of these things. Okay, that sounded really weird. Okay, hang on now because I. Uh, that I don't know where the heck we okay they talk about um YouTube advertisements it's nuts okay anyway we have experts who really spend their careers doing things like drying out paper evidence trying to recover the writing and the ink marks and potentially finger marks and all sorts of potentially relevant pieces of information from an article just like this in terms of understanding Laundrie's motive, his feelings about Gabby Petito, maybe events of any kind, notes or comments he may have made about the events, the notebook could shed a lot of light on those issues. Although Laundrie was named a person of interest in Gabby Petito's murder, he was never charged in connection with her murder. He was suspected of debit card fraud and withdrawing more than $1,000 from an unnamed account during the time that Gabby Petito was missing. Gabby Petito's family has claimed that Brian Laundrie stole her credit card to go home to Florida after she, after she was uh, killed. Let's see. And 
Josh Taylor, you know, doubled down on that yesterday. You know, who does that by saying then, other than confusion, the mistake they made thinking that Roberta was Brian likely changed nothing. There's a very good possibility that Brian was already deceased, he said. He still needed to be found. And the laundry's attorney said that the couple plans to hold, has no plans to hold a funeral, and they were grieving privately in Florida with their daughter Cassie, but they returned home today, as we just saw in a video. Yeah. new here. I'm just trying to see if there's anything that's popped up. I think we're, are we up to date? <clears throat> I think we are up to date now with that. Let me see. I do see that um, some mother abandoned her baby outside of a restaurant in Florida. Well, at least she didn't kill her, but Northport. I think we're up to speed on this. Let me see. Looks like we're up to speed. Let me see if you guys have any questions or you have anything that I missed. So let's see. This speaks loudly to the shoddy job FBI is doing, Kathy said. Okay, you think the Petitos just want their daughter's death to make change about domestic violence? Just a creepy coincidence that this is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Yes, Kelly B. And like I said, you know, um, you know, so many people that are looking to do something and the Gabby Petito Foundation is brand new. And I know uh, from the father that, you know, they're... There's not, I mean, they could use help like tech savvy help. And just as we've seen it, because um, our own Monolane Furniture, which, hi, Monolane Furniture, hope to see you back here. I think she was here under her regular name, and that's what I was trying to find out the other day, Rochelle. But, because um, she, she goes under both the business name, and I'm going to have to talk to her in Slack. But I will tell you something. When I did the story with um, Rosemary D'Alessandro about Joan's murder, and then we talked about the Joan D'Alessandro Foundation, which wasn't brand new. But again, you know, Rosemary is not very tech savvy and her, and her son, John, tries, but he's got a lot on his plate because he's the one like doing everything. Monolane Furniture just, you know, volunteered her time to build them a new website, you know, and that was great. Uh, that, that was amazing. So if you have skills like that and uh, you can help them, with something like that, I'm sure they'd be thrilled. And their plan is to help, you know, victims of domestic violence get out of situations. So there's always something like, I know a lot of people, like, like we said, want to kind of stay in a case, even when that case is like, it, they do have justice and it's come to an end. Now this case, unfortunately, I mean, until they... The FBI comes forward and says, all the evidence we have leads to Brian Laundry being the one that killed Gabby Petito. It's essentially an open case because if they don't say that, well, then who killed Gabby, right? And then could somebody be on the loose out there? And being that you had that other couple that was murdered, so that's always going to be there. They have to tie up this, they have to tie it up somehow. So, but when that's done, and I think we know which way that'll go, at that point, then what can you do? And, and so, like, doing something with the foundation, even supporting it, is, is the way to go. But there's a lot of things that a lot of people could do with the foundation. A lot of people have a lot of skills. They could help out and volunteer. And I'm sure the family would be really grateful the same way that the 
Um, Joan D. Alessandro Foundation was really happy when our own monolane furniture, you know, made them a new website. So always think about stuff like that. Kathy Baleo, well, they, they returned home, Kathy Baleo. I mean, you could say hiding. They're, they're inside their house. I think it would be hiding if they didn't return home or whatever, and it, but they're inside their house. The public isn't walking away here anytime soon. Mel Mac, do you mean the protesters? Miss Ladybug says, women's shelters saved mine and my children's lives more than once. Oh, that's nice to hear, Miss Ladybug. I mean, it's not nice to hear that you had to do that in the first place, but it's nice to hear that you had a place that helped you. That's wonderful. You're making a positive change in the world. What what is Henny doing? I missed that. Hi, Christy Kirsty Jane. The Petito family needs justice. The FBI just needs to find out what's in the notebook because there could be so much in that notebook about Gabby. Yes, Kirsty, that's true. That is true. You donate to the donkeys and animals. That's nice, Emma. Safe haven laws for babies. I know, Amy, but you know what? You got to say at least she she didn't. So many are killing their babies. At least she put the baby outside a restaurant where the baby was discovered, and I guess we just have to be happy for that. Um, why do the parents? Uh, I was trying to see what Henny was doing. I would love to believe that eventually they will identify Brian as responsible for Gabby's, but I believe it when I see it. But Robin, if they don't, if they don't, then the public are going to say, well, what's going on? Then there's somebody else out there. What's, you know, what's the information on that suspect? And why do you believe it wasn't Brian? And what's the evidence? You know, they're going to demand to see that. You donated some stuff to women's. Oh, that's nice, Gabby. Yeah, you could do that too. Women's shelters and family shelters do a lot for people. There just need to be more shelters. Yeah, Kirsty. Everyone should do that. Everyone should. Yeah, right. Everyone should. That would be really nice. Take a picture. You know what I mean, Henny? You should take a you should take a picture of that um, with like a. Well, you could put the hashtag on the picture and then challenge people to do it and post a picture. You know what I mean? If you have, if you're on social media, like Instagram or something. Hi, Kim Miller. Yeah, they, they're going to have to. They're, because if they, you know, if he was a person of interest and they don't come out and say something, You know, then it, essentially it's an open case and the murderer could be on the loose. So they, they have to tie that up because then the same thing is going to happen with the couple in, in Moab. And then if they're going to say, well, how could you say they were unrelated now if you, you don't even know what's going on? Halo Effect says the Emily for Lazo case is so similar Traveling couple, domestic violence, at least the husband confessed. Oh, yeah, that's the couple up in Vermont, right? right? Yeah, the husband confessed. And he, right, he didn't run away and, and kill himself, allegedly. Sad thing is, it's been my experience, many women keep going back. Yeah, they do, Pamela. And maybe that's, you know, because they've obviously been beaten down so much and it's the only thing they know and or they and they truly love the person and think that the person will change and the person's probably a good manipulator and all of that stuff I don't think these people are going to say anything no i i wouldn't um you think i mean i don't think that people should be out there screaming and yelling that's not the way 
to do things. It's not. But I think the FBI should say something. Brian wasn't charged with murder. Oh, Robin, yeah, you're seeing that a lot. And for the lawyer to say Brian was green. Yeah, I, Deanna, I heard that, but that guy, I think. I don't know if he was just misspeaking or because he's kind of all over the place. I don't know about that. I mean. Grieving. Because he, he could say he was grieving for the life he had. You know, I mean, there's, I don't know. Yeah, I. I've got to donate a bunch of um, kids clothing and uh, clothing to the, that's, that's what I'll do. I usually, see, we don't have a shelter near us, so I usually just put it in those um, boxes. But sometimes those boxes are just connected to people that resell it, right? So really got to find out. Well, Michelle, you know, you say these people aren't grieving at all. They're last seen shopping at Target. Do you think grieving people don't have to shop or that, you know, that no one is accountable to anyone in their grief? They aren't. They aren't. You have to you still have to live. You still have to shop. You still have to work. You still have to do all those things. And everyone grieves differently. So where's the Northport mayor? Where's her statement? I don't know. I mean, many people going in and out of shelters a number of times before they don't go back to the abuser. It's hard to support their kids and you can only stay in a shelter so long. Exactly. And you know how kids are there, you know, and it's like, it can be like, you'll just go back and for the kids because they're going stark raving mad in some someplace like that. You can't just go to a shelter. They're kept secret in the UK, Miss Ladybug. Okay. It was the day they found out Okay, um, I, I hear you there, but it doesn't mean that that was really the day they found out, because I think, Michelle, they knew a long time ago that he was likely gone. I think, I think they did. And I don't know why you say it's the same day they found out, because they went right home and stayed home that day. I think the target was when they went to, um, when they left the house and went to, to visit with Cassie is what I heard. And that wasn't the same day, but okay. Were you Miss Ladybug? I'm glad you overcame that. Bella Sanchez says the FBI now needs a complete makeover. The ones we have are getting lazy. Don't think they will say anything. They could speak. Yeah, I don't. I wouldn't look for the parents to be speaking. Mm -mm. I wouldn't. Um, but I think the FBI should be speaking. I do, and I believe they should, at the very least, tell us that they are. You know, if they're not going to make that statement about who they think is responsible based on whatever evidence they have, that they at least tell us that they're preparing something like that. And that it's going to be because just to leave it in limbo and not say anything. Where's Jimmy's timeline? Um, Jimmy has that timeline. Uh, you want me to work on a timeline? Yeah, well, Robin Lane says you were supposed to have it done. You made it, but you gave it to me in a printout. It's not something I can show. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks, Robin, for so cracking the whip on that. No, but Robin Lane said it should have been done and, and should be ready to go up now. She's very disappointed in you. She, yeah, he said he's slacking up, Robin. He's sorry. Okay, 
The whole timeline, yes. Okay. Yeah, what did Mike say? I missed that. I missed that. <laughs> Robin. It's okay, Robin. Hi, Lisa. You're so you're so mean. They have offices here in the UK. Call to see if they need help and donations. Yeah. Mm hmm Jimmy is on the way. Starting from the beginning on two times speed. Oh, Justin, everybody was looking for you last night. Okay. All right, uh, Kirsty. Uh, good night to your son. Have a nice evening. We'll see you. Pressure not just one woman, but two. He could use pressure sometimes. But um, yeah. So let me just let me just check in once. Let's see if Brian landed or anything. Let's see, because I don't know. He said getting ready to land. That was an hour ago. Let's see where he is. Let's see if anything else is going on here. Brian and Tin. Okay, so. Okay, we do have something new from Brian Enton. Medical examiner says no DNA analysis on Brian Laundrie's remains has been performed yet. Samples will be submitted for DNA testing once the examination of the remains is complete. The remains were confirmed to be Brian by using dental records. Okay. And an hour ago, the Laundries are back at their house in Northport, and we saw a video of that. If you missed it, you can rewind. And let's just see what the, uh, there's already 102 comments on this statement about the DNA that Brian tweeted eight minutes ago. So let's read some of these statements here. Okay, so someone said, but what if they were Roberta's teeth? Their teeth have similar builds. You know there's going to be 1,002 memes about this thing, right? They're already started. They've already taken... Um, Chris and Roberta Laundry walking together and going a father and a son out for his walk out as the Northport police see it. Someone said, I'll wait for the DNA. Someone said, someone needs to ask why DNA wasn't done during the initial medical examination. It doesn't make sense. They would do that, but who knows? Another one says, everyone that said I was crazy for not thinking he's dead is going to feel really stupid when it comes back as it's not him at all. Someone said, why can't they do things at the same time? Will sending in DNA really cause an issue with examination? Someone said, dental records are 100% accurate, which is true. DNA is only used to confirm the results. Someone said, I am seriously upset. Dental records on a partial skull cannot be conclusive entirely. This is somebody's opinion here. They should have submitted for DNA and or requested the anthropologist to do so. They can on the teeth. This gets worse by the day. I do not trust the Northport Police Department at all. Hope they do DNA. Uh, Brian Enton were in his teeth attached to the skull or loose. It's sad that we even have to ask like they were in the sand or in the skull, like was the root down in the jawbone or glued on the surface? Someone said, so how did they make the identification so quick? Had dental records already been asked for? Had they had them on hand? Someone said, can you all believe they ID that body off a partial skull and dental records when DNA is the gold standard for identification? It's unreal how backwards the investigation is. Someone said, this is confusing. I thought... Examination by a medical examiner was complete and inconclusive and remains turned over to the anthropologist, or is this still part of the medical 
examiner's exam, but wait, DNA analysis can be done simultaneously. Someone said they're willing to bet y'all it's not him. I bet everyone was assuming that because of the Nancy Grace special, there was a headline stating there was no DNA match. Yes, make sure every, every way if testing is done to triple check. So too many mistakes have been made in this case. Someone said no offense, but what in the world are they waiting for? At least we have it in writing that they will submit it. But I mean, to me, this would have been common sense to submit the DNA so you can verify the dental confirmation, especially since it was only a partial skull. And then someone said the DNA is found in the tooth pulp. How else did they know? Please explain how they determined it was Brian from the dental records. Oh my gosh, really, lady? I'm sorry about that. Does she really think that? Okay. It's not, okay, I'm not even going to go there, sorry. Dental imaging, I believe it's like fingerprints unique to the person, yes. Legend says that they're still trying to decipher between who is Brian and who is Roberta. And they said, Brian, Dad, I'm going to the spot at the reserve that I love so much to commit suicide. I did a bad thing, and I can't live with myself. Dad, sounds good, Brian. Thanks for letting me know. I'll pick up the Mustang when you're done. Okay. Uh, someone said, interestingly, I would have assumed that the FBI was already running the test. I guess they are no longer handling things. Uh, I don't know how they're thinking that. Can we find out if the teeth were attached to a mandible? So what now? Is it inconclusive whether it's him? No. A few fillings does not a dead person make. That's not, that's not what they're looking at. Are we ever going to know? You know, it, it's confirmed that it's him. This case is both infuriating and comical at this point with the MPPD fumbling every yard in confirmation. It's Brian before they even test for DNA. If those remains aren't him, then they need to bring his dad in and investigate the police. I feel like a broken record. Now, someone said, this is very misleading. And here's a something. It says, last night on Fox News, Nancy Grace, she and other correspondents reported that no DNA match or cause of death for Brian Laundrie after Skull found. According to People Magazine, Brian Laundrie's autopsy has come back inconclusive and his remains are now being transferred to an anthropologist. Yeah, the dental records confirmed him. They didn't confirm it with DNA, but they're going to. So, but it's the dental records are a hundred percent. So it's, it's him. It's him. <sighs> Let's see what else they say. Crazy as it sounds, there will be someone quote a treat, a tweet or reply to this and say, it means he's still alive and living in an underground bunker while updating his following count on Instagram. Correct. Someone says, I don't think you people understand how accurate dental records are. No two oral cavities are alike. Teeth are unique to an, an individual. X-rays, fillings, colors, shape, abnormalities, decay. For these to be positively identified by the FBI, they would have to match dental records. Someone said, how can they possibly 100% say, I think they mean positively, that was Brian. Without DNA, they did say it was a partial skull. So how can they 100% confirm it was Brian? Can I just point out that um, when they say partial skull, it may just be the top that's missing and his jaw and teeth may have been intact completely as well but nobody's thinking about that they're thinking when they're saying partial that it was missing the bottom and it's more likely if he used a firearm that it's the top that's Then here's someone said, I heard someone in his family was a dentist. Can anyone confirm this? If so, once again, I'm not believing that he's dead. It all seems way too coincidental. You know, I mean, <clears throat> I hate to say it, but if you were like an employer looking for someone and if you looked at these tweets just to make sure that that potential candidate was not on one of these 
tweets. I don't know. Maybe that might be everybody's responsible for what they say. Maybe these words could come back to haunt these people someday. And someone said, the forensic expert doing the dental ID has to compare x-rays with intact bone and jaw. It's a very meticulous and thorough process and it includes the FBI. There wouldn't be any trickery involved in this. And then another person replied to her and said, the case was done by the FBI. They aren't going to use some small town dentist, especially one who's related to the victim. A lot of what you hear is media hysteria, propaganda, trolling, and conspiracy, completely void of logic, common sense, and accuracy within the law. You're hired. Thank you for bringing some truth here. Um, what dentist confirmed the records? Sorry, but lots of us will still wait for DNA confirmation. Dental records have been used to identify remains since 66 AD. Please stop with the conspiracies. Okay, someone said, but just wait, Brian Enton. My question is... Why wasn't the first thing to test to confirm it's Brian Laundry? Dental records do not confirm DNA. I've, I've got teeth like my mom's. It's BS. Look this mess up. The DNA, and that will be inconclusive or worse, contaminated DNA. Oh, boy. Someone said, honestly, I feel like this changes things a bit. I don't want to be skeptical, but the whole thing is mom was actually him really is terrible. It is. And I just have lost all confidence in that department. Yeah, but the Northport Police Department was not the one making the identification with the dental records. I guess we will see. Thank you, Brian. Someone said, honestly, it would be, have been better if they said that no one was watching the house. I've asked my five-year-old daughter if these were the same people. She said no. I asked her to point out the differences, and the first thing she said is, one is a boy and one is a girl. I just can't with the NPPD. Another one said, hi, Brian. Do we know if any clothes were found together with Brian Laundrie's remains, hiking boots, hat? I understand there were clothes in the backpack. But what about the ones he was wearing? Someone said, going to need that definitive DNA proof, Mr. Medical Examiner. Okay. Uh, what I see is there's more um, conspiracy and stuff than the people that, I guess, hopefully, it's just that the people that uh, know better are not responding. Now, someone misunderstood this whole thing. It goes, the dental records are wrong and the notebook and belongings around the skeletal remains were someone else's? Oh, where did they get that? But why hasn't this been done yet? Isn't DNA the most accurate form of identification of remains? I know dental is also accurate, but DNA is better, especially in a case like this with so many mistakes. Gabby's was done fast. Then somebody said the NPPD has nothing to do with identifying the remains. This is where the responsibility of the coroner medical examiner for the county where he was found. In addition to the regular coroner medical examiner staff, a forensic odontologist will have worked on the remains and made the actual ID. And someone said, he's dead. He's not going to become end undead at any point. Someone said, I can take my tooth out, right? And put it on the ground and you're all going to assume I'm dead? Oh my gosh. Someone said, oh my gosh. Even with DNA results, it seems people will still not believe he's dead. Absolutely.
So confused with this case every day. Next breaking news will be DNA was not a match. We thought the teeth looked like his photo. We had a bit like we thought he was getting out of the Mustang when it was his mom. Seriously, they have made so many mistakes. Why not triple check everything before saying it's him? Someone said, I will be surprised if it's actually him. This whole case is a shite show. Everything, every day, something else that doesn't make sense. A bunch of memes and stuff. They should do DNA. I don't believe it's him. Oh my gosh. Okay. Okay. So yeah, crazy. Um, let me see if Brian says anything else before we go. So yeah, that's what's there. I think we're all up to speed. Uh, it's so crazy. He had on his Tarzan costume. That's why he's closer in the bag. Benton says, hi, Benton. Jay Qu hey, Jay Quinn, how are you doing? Hope you're feeling better. Hi, Nana Patty. Ask one of the mods. I'm on my phone. What do you need, Jay Quinn? Is that a bat sock? So crazy. Did you get a new phone? Oh, for Slack? Yeah. Hi, Tony Monte. Tina Gillespie, it's good to see you back again. I really haven't seen you in a chat in ages. Jeanette Miller, can't believe the word any laundry says. Okay. Wild boars are nasty creatures, Tenny says. Well, they are, right? Yeah, they are. We have them around here, supposedly, too. Thank goodness I've never seen them. Hi, Mike. Mike dropping mom. How are you? Um, have you ever tried finding your own dental records once a dentist is closed? MD, you're funny. Okay. Um. Oh, I don't. I no, no, thanks, babe. I don't. Yeah, I'm not. Hi, Chelsea. All right, I'm going to let you guys go then. Um, I think we're up to date on everything. Laundries are back home. Stephen Bertolino made a statement, basically said that this can be used as a learning experience for all the agencies that messed up and that the family should not be blamed that if, the, if you're surveilling somebody, you should be surveilling someone all the time. It's your fault and learn from it. And then, um, and of course, I'm paraphrasing. If you want to hear the real statement, uh, rewind back. Then there was a video of the family returning home. They got out. I believe it was a CNN reporter that was shouting out them. And they did not respond as usual. And Brian Enton is on his way. He should be landing now. I would assume he's there in Moab and Wyoming to kind of go through the steps of Gabby Petito. And then we'll have a special broadcast Thursday evening. And we'll be covering Brian and then just said that the DNA, as we said, will be done, but that Brian was identified 100% through dental records. And what else did we have? Um, I think... Your, and the notebook is at most likely at the FBI headquarters in Quantico, Virginia, where it's being restored, if, it, if at all possible. And let's see, and that's, that's about it. So everybody should be up to date with that. And of course, you know, anything else, we'll, we'll get right on it. But I think everybody's up to date now and uh we'll see you guys later on i hope everybody stay dry if you're where it's we're having a state of emergency in new york it's still raining and uh prayers for the people that are in those flood zones because those can be wicked hi nikki mickey how are you all right and um, i'll see you guys later hi lisa age nana patty everybody that came in while i was deborah vancouvered in Yes, hunters go get boars. They're hired for a bounty, Mel Mac says. They live near and hang around water. Okay. Okie dokie. Have a good night, Kelly B. Thank you. 
Robin Lane, everybody. Chelsea, Robin Lane, thanks for lighting the fire under Jimmy. Um, making him keyboard jump all over. Uh-oh, somebody's jumping. Hi, John Wasaki. Yeah, John Wasaki, you're going to have to rewind. Justin, good to see you. Tony Monty, Deanna, Hope. Okay, yeah, I'll be safe. Thank you. I'm, I'm not planning on going anywhere, Hope. Staying here. You have a chance for severe weather tonight, Nana Patty. Stay safe. All right, everybody. All right, we'll see you guys later. Hey, Michael. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.